who's behind the mask. What's up guys, Shane here. Me and Elias were in New York City checking out some of Epson's new product announcements. They had some cool VR glasses and some new printers. We also got to hang out with Shaq. But we aren't here for glasses, printers, or Shaq. We're here to take a look at their new projectors. The first two we're going to check out are the 3200 and the 3800 models. These are going to be their affordable home theater projectors. We'll let Carlos tell you all about them. This is what we believe is going to be the best selling SKU going forward. We have two very good selling projectors under a thousand. We have the 3800 at $1699 and the 3200 at $1499. Uh, we believe these ones are going to be the one taking over. This is going to be the best selling, the most popular SKUs because there's going to be the, they're going to be the best performing 4K HDR projectors in the market. And especially with the price point, it's going to make them very, very attractive. I'm gonna walk you through three scenes of a movie and I'm gonna highlight uh, very specific things that I would like you to pay attention to that would demonstrate the quality of the projector performance. And so we're gonna start with this first scene. This scene is about detail and brightness together, right? So you'll see a lot of detail in the decoration, the furniture, the flowers, everything that's happening on the background with a lot of detail, but also on the character's faces. You'll see the eyelashes, the eyebrows, and even the skin pores, you'll see them in this picture. And at the same time, which is really hard to do, is that you see an amazing level of brightness coming in through the windows from the outside, especially when she holds the, the glass of champagne and she's pouring it up. Uh, you'll see the sparkle that is really bright, it's, it's beautiful. And in this one, I want you to pay attention to color execution. So you'll see, first of all, uh, the background again with the sky. This is a sunset, so beautiful transitions between yellow, orange, light blue, dark blue. Uh, no banding, no artifacts, no JPEG compression, no posterization. Mm -hmm. We've seen that with other products uh, from, from competitors that because of the way they process color, you see those transitions, like bands that would show the transitions between color. And then uh, just look at the skin tones. By the way, this projector has not been calibrated no special tweaking to make it look better. This is out of the box performance. The only thing we did was match it with the size of the screen, mm -hmm. right? With the knobs and adjusting so that it fits the screen, but no further tweaking has been done. So the, the skin tones will look beautiful. And everything that I mentioned before, the detail and the brightness, you'll still see it, but pay closer attention to the color execution. Just in case you're wondering why you see grain in the picture, mm. that was because the grain was added to, as an after effect. They wanted it to, to have that romanticism and theatrical appeal. So they added the grain as an after effect to make it look that way. So basically the projector is not getting in the way. It's just showing whatever the intention was of the original filmmakers. And you're adding some of your post-processing in it? It's a little some sharpening and uh, smooth radiation, stuff yeah, like that? There's, yeah, we have uh, five presets. I think it's in preset three. I, I, I don't remember because it's default, so I haven't touched it. Mm -hmm. But there's certain levels in which you can adjust the the sharpness at the pixel level. Okay. Is there a dynamic Irish on this at all? Though? Yes. There is? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so Epson is a company that in general <coughs> communicates in color. So color is very relevant for us. Mm -hmm. And then we're also in the projector space pushing for brightness, especially with HDR, is something that is critical uh, because that's where you see the, the actual uh, richness of color. And this is actually what I'm going to show you now in the last scene. Now this is about extreme contrast in just one scene. Mm -hmm. You have the singer wearing a very white shiny dress on the spotlight. Uh, even the presenter is wearing a white shirt, but then you have people sitting in the dark with uh, dark suits as well. You'll see the texture in their suits. Um, so it's amazing level of contrast ratio that you'll see there. And at the same time, the HDR, uh, you see the curtains with a bright red, but especially on her makeup, her lips, it's just like beautiful how that color is rendered. And then how you see 
kind of her silhouette cutting out of the background, making it look like it's three dimensional. The 3800 has 100,000 to one contrast ratio. Mm -hmm. The 30, 32 is uh, 40,000 to one. This is a uh, entry level, I would say, uh, 4K Pro UHD technology. So that's why we said, okay, we're gonna try to make these more affordable for mm -hmm. the end user. We know people are after 4K and HDR, so we wanted them to enjoy that experience at a more affordable price point. And this is the 3000 or 32? This is a 3800. 3, yeah. So this is the one that has the better contrast ratio. This is 100,000 to one. Yeah. And it has speakers. We're obviously using an external sound system. Yeah, the sound but this yeah. one has a, a set of stereo speakers. So basically mm -hmm. that means that you can put it in the table in front of you. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hook up any of the latest gaming consoles or even the latest streaming devices, you can do 4K resolution with 60 hertz, no problem, no issues. You can control the intensity of the HDR effect and all that. Is there an HDR slider? There's an HDI slider, so you basically have direct access to the HDR setting from the remote. It's a big button here, so you just press it. Uh, it's out of the picture now because we're using a uh, 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio screen, mm -hmm. and the projector's panel is 16 to 9, so you're seeing mm -hmm. this lighter yeah. right on the frame. Yeah. The HDR setting is actually untouched. It's on the default setting of 8. If you want to make the picture look a little bit brighter, you can slide it to the left, and if you want to make it a little bit darker, you slide it to the to the right, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The content will basically determine the right setting. The, there's, there's basically no metadata that tells you which is the right setting, so it's a matter yeah. of preference. That's why we make it very accessible for the end user. Mm -hmm. This is basically a unit that packs all the features of a very expensive projector, but at, at a more affordable and convenient case design. The 3800 and the 3200, 1699 for the 3800 and 1499 for the 3200. We want this to be a TV replacement, so that's why we packed an amazing set of features. It's a 4K Pro UHD projector. It supports 18 gigabits per second uh, through the HDMI ports, HDMI 2.0, both of them. So that means that you can hook up with the latest gaming consoles and have 4K 60 hertz experience. Uh, the Android TV is built into the system as well, so that gives you access to all of the applications available in the Android store. Do you, do you find having the, um, the operating system built into the projector, does that impede the input response on that? So there's there's two inputs on the back. Yep. So if you're, if you're running a gaming console, it would go directly through HDMI 2.0 at full 18 gigabits per second. So there's no, there's no conflict between the built-in Android interface and whatever you hook up on, on, on the back side of the projector. Again, this is your three chip LCD, so you're not using TI's chip? Yes, so everything that we produce Epson owns the three LCD technology and all of our projectors use three chips. One for red, one for green, one for blue. So just the primary color, which is all you need to produce all the possible colors in the world. And that's what drives this technology as well. It's part of the 4K Pro UHD design. So we have 4K pixel shifting technology with HDR and HLG, all driven by three LCD. And that's what drives this picture quality. So, Quality on the screen depends on the content. This is 4K HDR content. If you look at it, it's just beautiful the way it looks on the screen. Mm -hmm. And the lumen output is 4,000? This is 4,000 lumens, correct. And it's a laser projector, so that means you have over 20,000 hours of operation without any maintenance. That means, obviously, kind of a lifetime of a projector like mm -hmm. expectancy. If it's laser and you do burn it out, can you replace it? So it's, it's not that it stops working after 20,000 hours, it would just reduce its performance. It's kind of like the time within it's going to perform at the level that we expect it to perform. So after that, uh, it's going to drop. But if you calculate about two hours of use per day, that means it's just a simple math. It's about 20 years of operation. So I'm sure that by then, you'll find another Epson product to replace it. Okay. And I see the, there's a sound bar in it as well? Is audio? Yeah, so uh, the projector does have speakers. Both models, they're exactly the same. It's the color that changes. There's stereo speakers hidden here. That's why we have a mesh. Actually, if you take out this mesh, 
you have access to the control. This is magnetic, so it's pretty easy to access the controls. And you can see the speakers on both of the extremes, right? So the projector already comes with speakers. That means that it's, uh, it's, it's basically ready out of the box to give you that 100 inches TV experience. But if you want to enhance that experience, you're obviously uh, capable of there's an audio output to connect its a separate sound system. And one of the HDMI ports is also ARC, so that means that you can have full bandwidth of the, and, and, and digital quality of the audio signal transmitted to an external sound system. We just have a soundbar here for you to like enjoy a better experience, but you can uh, hook up any of your preferred sound systems. When you guys release this, uh, it does come as a package deal, and it comes with a comes with a screen in the in the projector. Yeah. So basically, you have let's say four options. You have two sizes of the screen, and then two colors of the unit to match with your home deck. You have a black unit and a white unit, and then you have a hundred inches on the screen and a hundred inches on the screen. Hundred inches again is forty nine ninety nine, and the hundred and twenty is fifty nine ninety nine. Now here are some quick impressions on what we saw today. The 3800, which wasn't calibrated or tweaked, we were both impressed on how sharp and detailed the image was. None of these are native 4K projectors, so if you get up close, the pixel density isn't quite as smooth and compact as a true 4K projector. It's definitely better than any 1080p projectors I've seen without pixel shift, and at the distance that we were sitting, we didn't have much to complain about. Black levels weren't as good as their own 6050 UB we reviewed, but given the fact that the 3800 is less than half the cost, we can't nitpick too much. Now for the main attraction, the LS500. This one got our attention the minute that we walked into the showroom. They had it projecting on an ambient light rejecting screen, so depending on the quality of screen you'll be using it on, that will greatly affect its performance. But from what we saw, the 4K HDR content they were playing was super bright and it was 4K crispy. Again, it's a pixel shifter, which is probably why it's only 5 grand. Remember, Sony's ultra short throw model is something like 25 grand, so the Epson is a bargain. Colors looked great, but I would have liked to have seen it in a darkened room. So hopefully we can get one in for a review. I could definitely see myself owning one of these, and yes, it comes in black. LG, are you guys paying attention over there? Well, we want to send a thanks to Epson for having us at the show, and we look forward to hopefully getting one of these in for a review. So, of all three projectors, which one are you most interested in? For me personally, I'd like to check out that LS500. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.